Okay, good day. This is Honors House with you. I am Mr. McCulley, and this is the video presentation for Section 5-1 Intro to Polynomials. So let's get right to it. The learning goals for today is that we are going to be learning how to multiply, divide, and simplify monomials and expressions involving powers. And then we are also going to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. Dividing polynomials will be addressed in the next lesson. So let's talk about monomials for a moment. And to do that, we are going to review some properties of exponents. And I just have some quick examples for these properties of exponents. If we have uh, two exponents that we're multiplying where the bases are the same, we can add the exponents. So as a for instance, if I had x squared times x to the third, I could add those two. 2 plus 3 would give me x to the fifth. If I raise a power to a power, I'm going to multiply those powers. So similarly, if I go x squared to the third power, I'm going to multiply. So 2 times 3 would give me x to the sixth. If I have two things that I'm multiplying together and I raise that expression to a power, I raise each of those two values that I'm multiplying to the same power. So as a for instance, let's go 3x squared. Now I have to square both of those values. So I'll have 3 squared and I'll have x squared and we should simplify that to 9x squared. Anytime you have a negative, anytime that you have a negative exponent, you can make that one over that same expression with a positive exponent. So as a for instance, if I had x to the negative four, I could rewrite that as one over x to the positive four. Anything to the zero power is always one, provided that that value is not zero. So if I did point two to the zero power, I would still get one. Now there's a neat trick for us to think about how that works. And it's fairly simple, just do it real quick here. If I go two to the first, I know that that's two. If I go two to the second, I know that that's four. If I do two to the third, I know that that's eight. And if I do two to the fourth, I know that that's 16. Every time that I go up a power, I multiply by two. So two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. Well, again, I'm trying to figure out what two to the zero power is, and we think it should be one, and it's gonna make sense because if I multiplied to go up, I should divide to come down. So 16 divided by two is eight, eight divided by two is four, four divided by two is two, two divided by two is one. So that pattern has to hold. If I have the division of two exponential expressions with the same base, I am going to subtract the exponents. So if I have, let's say I have x to the fourth over x to the second, four minus two will give me x to the second. And similar to the expression we have for number three, if you have a division of two values raised to a power, then you can raise each of those two values in the division to that power. As an example, if I had x over three squared, that's gonna be x squared over three squared, which I should simplify to either x squared over nine or one ninth x squared, whichever one you prefer. Okay, let's start with some examples from page 307, number 20. What they're going to ask us to do here is to simplify Excuse me. And in this first expression here, they want us to simplify this fraction. It has three variables, x, y, and z, and it has this new numerical expression out front. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna break it up and we'll deal with each of these individually. So we'll deal with the numerical values, the x's, the y's, and the z's. And so if I talk about negative seven over 21, well, seven and 21 both have a factor of seven. And so if I reduce negative seven over 21, I'll get down to negative one over three. 
the x's. I've got x to the fifth over x to the seventh. Now we had a property that said, and it's this property right here, if you have a variable expression over a variable expression, you subtract. So in this particular case, I have x to the fifth over x to the seventh. So I'm going to subtract five minus seven is negative two. x to the fifth over x to the fifth, when I subtract five from five, I get y to the zero power. And then when I go z to the fourth over z squared and I subtract, z to the fourth or four minus two will give me z to the second. Now I should simplify. Now, we had a property in the last page that when you have a negative exponent, you can push that to the bottom. And I have a three on the bottom. So on the bottom of this expression, I'll have three x squared. The y to the zero is just going to be one. And I have a negative one. So negative one times the one is still gonna be negative one times z squared, because the z squared is gonna stay in the top, will give me just negative z squared in the top, and that will be my final answer for that one. Here, when I have n to the fifth to the fourth, that is going to be n to the five times four, which I will simplify to n to the 20th power, and that is my final answer for that expression. Polynomial functions, any function that has a general form where n is a natural number. And before we move on, let's review what a natural number is. A natural number is just the counting numbers that you're used to. So when you learned how to count back in kindergarten, and they go one, two, three, four, five, those are your natural numbers. So n has to be a natural number of some sort. And this expression is just a general form expression. What it does is it allows us to write any type of polynomial that we want. Now, we don't need all of these terms, and these three dots here in the middle refer to an unknown number of terms between this term and this a sub 2x squared term. But if I get rid of all of these and I just talk about these last three terms, a sub 2x squared plus a sub 1x plus a sub 0, well, that's a quadratic. And if I talk about just these last two terms alone, a sub 1x plus a sub 0, well, that's just a linear equation. We know that y equals mx plus b. So these additional terms are just other forms of polynomial functions. We have some nomenclature to discuss here. Our leading term is always going to be a sub n x to the n, which in most cases is the term with the highest power. All right. And the leading coefficient is just the numerical value out in front of that. The constant term is always the term that has no variable expression. A linear term will be the term that has the x to the first power. The quadratic term will always be the term that has the x to the second power. And the degree of the polynomial is always the highest power. So just as a for instance, if I go y equals 2x to the third plus 3x plus 5, I could say that the degree is 3 because the highest power is 3. I can say that the leading term is going to be 2x to the third. I can say that the constant term is 5. And I can say that the linear coefficient, well, the linear term would be 3x, but the linear coefficient would just be 3. So there's a lot of things that we can do with that. That's just an, a simple example. Being able to determine if something does not qualify under a given definition is often just as important as being able to tell what qualifies for a given definition. So I have four expressions here. 
and we're trying to determine whether or not they are a polynomial. If they're not a polynomial, state y. So what I'd like you to do here is just press pause for a second and take a look at the four expressions and think about what each of those expressions are. Do they fit the definition of a polynomial? And once you've made your own decision, unpause and I will go over these expressions. Okay, did you actually stop and try? I'll give you another chance. Okay, here are the solutions. This first one is not a polynomial because we have a negative exponent. So our exponents can always can only be positive. So this thing is going to tell us no. The second one, I tried to fool you by putting this square root of 55. This is a polynomial. Now that one is a polynomial because the square root of 54 is a numerical value and our constant value would be the square root of 54. But this number one, number three is not a polynomial. And that is because we have a variable under a radical. The square root of x is another way that you might not have a polynomial or that you won't have a polynomial. And finally, this one is also not a polynomial. You cannot divide by a variable expression. So in these last two, that is what makes this not a polynomial and the x in the division, it makes it not a polynomial. All right, next, adding and subtracting polynomials. You can only add or subtract terms of similar variable and degree. In the past, we've called these liked terms. So when I look at this expression here, I can only add the x squared plus the two x squared, giving me three x squared. I can add the negative 3x and the 5x because they are this they are terms of similar degree, giving me positive 2x. And the 4 and the negative 3 are terms of like degree. So 4 plus negative 3 is going to give me 1, and that will give me that expression. If I'm asked to subtract, the first thing I have to do before I can actually combine my like terms is to distribute the negative to remove the parentheses. And so I'll have 2x squared minus 6x plus 3. Now I have to distribute this negative to each term. So I'll have negative x squared. Negative negative is a positive, so I'll have positive 5x and then minus 6 here at the end. So now I'm going to collect my like terms. And so 2x squared and negative x squared just gives me x squared. Negative 6x and positive 5x gives me just negative 1x. But again, I wouldn't write that. I just write it as x. And then 3 minus 6 will give me negative 3. And that is my final answer there. Multiplying polynomials. When you multiply polynomials, you're going to distribute and multiply each monomial term from the first polynomial by each monomial term in the second polynomial. Note, stacking like degree monomials can be helpful, and I will be doing that for this one. So if I go x times x squared, I'll have x to the third. x times negative x is negative x squared. x times negative one will give me negative x. Now when I go through and I multiply 
Now when I go through and I multiply each term in the second polynomial by 2, I am going to stack terms of like degree. So 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. And then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. I'm going to add these terms together. So x to the third gives me x to the third. Negative x squared plus 2x squared gives me just 1x squared. Negative x plus negative 2x is negative 3x. And then nothing plus or nothing plus negative 2 gives me negative 2. And there's my answer there. A second example, I have two trinomials. I'm going to do the, essentially the same thing. So I will multiply everything in the second polynomial by this first term. So x squared times 3x squared is 3x to the fourth. x squared times negative 6x is negative 6x to the third. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared. So I've multiplied everything by this first mop this first term. Now I multiply everything by the second term. So negative 4x times 3x squared will give me negative 12x to the third. So I'm stacking it underneath the x to the third column so that I can add them more easily. Then negative 4x times negative 6x will give me positive 24x squared negative 4x times negative 4 will give me positive 16x. Then I move over to this third term in the first polynomial. 1 times 3x squared will give me 3x squared. And again, notice I'm keeping everything lined up. 1 times negative 6x is negative 6x. And then 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. I'm just going to add these all together. So I have 3x to the fourth negative 6x to the third plus negative 12x to the third is negative 18x to the third. Negative 4x squared plus 24x squared will be, will be 20x squared plus 3x squared will be 23x squared. Positive 16x plus negative 6x will be positive 10x and negative 4 plus nothing will give me negative 4. All right. Well, that's all I've got for today, folks. So, the Mandalorian fun fact of the day. Initially, Gina Carano believed that she was going to play a female Wookiee and was surprised when she found out that her face would be shown throughout the series. Here is Gina Carano, and here is a random female Wookiee cosplay that I found on the internet, and I found it amusing, so I thought I would add that as well. That's all I got for today, folks. Goodbye.